to demonstrate the audible effect of the frame, of, uh, the audible, no, let's, I see, I'm, I'm, this is not a good way to start the video yet. Uh, the sound of the frame effect, okay? Uh, I wanted to point out something that's, that's kind of equivalent here. So if I go into clips and I go to break classic machine, okay, I'm gonna drag that onto my audio track here. Uh, it instantly uh, reorientates the tempo here to 134, which is the original tempo of the, the sound uh, clip, okay? Uh, yes, okay, warp is set and loop is on, okay? And if I hit play, we'll start hearing this. Okay. So how do I time stretch this in Ableton? How do I get it to play more slowly? If I remember Ableton? Change the tempo. You just change the tempo, yes? But live is doing a lot of math in the background in order to make that happen. Okay, so if I first go from 134 to 70. Lovely. Okay. I'm going to go even farther. I'm going to go to 20. Okay. Now, down here in the sample player, there's actually some settings for the algorithm being used to time stretch this, okay? Would you say that this is more percussive material or uh, pitched material? This should be a pretty easy hand. More percussive. Percussive, yes, okay. It's a drum loop. It's percussive, okay? <laughs> when, it's you got, break, when you break it down like this, though, it's more pitched than it was before. Well, yeah, if you, you're time stretching it, yes, okay. You're going to hear more of the tone, right? But the original sample is more of percussion. It's more uh, that word transient gets used in the article, right? It's the, what he's talking about here are those sudden changes in dynamics. Transient is a term that's used for uh, the onset of the, of something, okay? Uh, and when we talk, when we talk about the uh, microphones, we talk about the transient response, how quickly they respond to a change in sound, okay? So this is a, it has quick changes from, so from low, from low levels to high levels, okay? And the default algorithm here is set to beats, but if I change it to an algorithm that's better at stretching tones, Ready to hear that? What now? Yeah. You hear what it's doing to the onset of the sounds? It's like repeating them, yes? Okay, and if I go to texture as well, I can hear it as well. This is what he's alluding to in terms of frame effect. The fact that you don't get just one hit anymore because of the time stretching algorithm it's it's actually pulling from those hits multiple times remember those overlapping streams of FFT data that's what I'm that's what you're hearing here okay that's what the author from uh, the Charles uh, is describing as a frame effect I that's not a consistent term that you're gonna find throughout the literature but this is what I believe he's describing is this this repetition of the attacks that happens when you are moving past transients, moving past the onset of samples. Does that make sense? Some of you are looking to like start a new genre of electronic music right now, yes? Okay, it's really slowed down. What now? It's a lot like IDM and I love it. Okay, so does that, does that help get it in your ear in terms of what he's talking about with the frame effect? The fact that it, you trip over the, the, the attack multiple times and you get this kind of uh, repetition of the of the uh, of the attack. Okay, that's what I think. That's what I think. And this, that was the clearest example I could put in front of you, t so you could hear what that sounds like. Rob. Yeah, real quick question. Um, mm -hmm. Was that you just pulling the audio file in, or did you put it in a simpler? I just put it on the track. Okay, I did not put it in a simpler. I just put it on the track and then lowered the tempo. Okay. But it's that repetition of the attack that happens when you're when you're windowing the sound. That's what he's referring to as a frame effect. Okay, and it's it's more audible with transient sounds than it is with pitched sounds. Okay, things that are pitched and sustained. Okay, 
So moving on to another demo, okay? So I'm gonna open up Max for this one. Uh, you're free to, you have access to these demos as well. So if you'd like to pull them up on your machine, please do so. Um, where I'm gonna get these, I'm going to go into, where did I go? Extras, examples overview, okay? Extras, examples, overview is where I'm going. That's going to open up this patch. And I think the default tab here at the top is latest. We want the MSP tab. Okay. And right below MSP is FFT fun. FFT stands for Fast Fourier Transform. Okay. That's what it stands for. Okay. Uh, I want to start with the Forbidden Planet example. Okay. So go ahead and open that up. Uh, and if you start audio on your machine, you're going to hear something that sounds like this. Okay. What it is, what you've got here. So first off, Forbidden Planet. What's the reference here? I know I played this. Ex I, I think I played an example from this last semester. Anybody remember Forbidden Planet? Yeah, it's a movie. It's a classic sci-fi movie with a, an electronic music score by Louis and Bebe Baron. It's the first all-electronic movie score nominated for an Academy Award, okay? All the way back in the 1950s, okay? In the 50s, it might be early 60s. Okay? I might have the date wrong. Dates are not my strong suit, which is one of the reasons why I don't test you on dates, okay? <laughs> anyway, um, so, oop, let me zoom out a little bit here. What you have here, okay, we've got noise, white noise coming into an FFT algorithm. If you're curious what it's doing, you can double click on this and see what the internal patch, sub patch looks like here that's doing uh, the FFT math, okay? But it's pretty basic. It's actually creating a filter with a frequency response uh, that mirrors this uh, UI right here, okay? So right now, instead of a what we would think of as a classic uh, frequency response of a low pass filter or a high pass filter, They've just got a few random items here and then some little random peaks, okay? Uh, and because, oh look at, there's that 1024. Because we've got 1024 samples going in here, each one of these peaks is tw about 20 hertz wide. Is that what we said in our slide? What did we say? 21.5. Yeah, 21.53 hertz wide, okay? So each one of those is what it's, what's happening there, okay? If you're interested to hear some more uh, typical filters, you can use this drop-down list. That's a low-pass filter. See how it looks like a low-pass filter? We can roll off, okay? But I can draw this interactively, right? I, if I want a high-pass filter, I can change my cutoff, okay? Now I've got a high pass filter. I want a brick wall so what? that nothing happens after that roll off. What, I get what's that. What's up with non porto qua? What is, what is that? Randomness. That's not a, a literal, like, typical filter response, right? But it's much like the star drive one that, is, that starts us off, basically. So, when you're using an FFT to create a filter, you can get really creative with how you draw your filter response. If you want low frequencies down here, nothing, and then one little peak right here. We hear that in the back? Okay. So you have, you have a lot more granularity of control over your frequency response when you're building your filter via FFT. But what's the problem, remember? What happens to the audio in terms of the delay? Yeah, you're, you're, you're introducing a delay into the audio by doing this, okay? So for real-time applications, it'd be great, it'd be great if I could in that stadium arena show, hey, you know what, there's a ringing at 1056 hertz, can you kill that for me? Oh yeah, sure, let me just grab that and pull it down basically that would be fabulous but the trade-off is the delay that you're introducing okay that's the trade-off here okay um, uh, I'll let you guys play around with that more later 
I'm gonna close. Uh, I'm gonna actually close this patch just because I don't want them running in the background. I'm gonna go to phase vocoder sampler next. Let me see if I can. I'm trying to note my time here. Uh, 36, 20. Okay, I'm gonna go to the phase vocoder sampler next. Open that one up. Okay, and I'm gonna pull out an old classic here, which is where's my demos. Yeah, I'm going to pull Tom's Diner back out. <coughs> Actually, this might get me... Oh, if I post this on YouTube, I might get a little bit of a tag here. Um, <laughs> I didn't think about that. Anyway, we'll find out. Um, okay, so now I've got Tom's Diner loaded in here. I can actually, with this phase vocoder plugin, I can either play it back by hitting a key. Uh, let's see, turn it on. Hit a key. Oh, I did, I, did I turn it down? Yeah, I turned it down. No. Where are you, Suzanne? Why am I not hearing you? Okay, something happened here. Can you remind us of why we use Tom's Diner to... The... Oh man, what's going on here? Let me try it this way. Instead of... Uh, yeah, the MP3. It, it, Tom's Diner was the test file when they were when they were developing the MP3 algorithm. MP3. Yep. I, I meant. Why? There she is. Okay. So if I want to slow her down, I can just click. So this is a time stretching algorithm that's using FFTs. Windowing the data, moving through. Okay, um, I could dig. I don't have to dig into the t sub, sub patch to see how many samples are being used in each one of the FFT um, systems and how many overlapping uh, streams of FFT data they have. But the, it's a pretty simple uh, uh, interface here, which I, I don't really like. This interface of using the keyboard to to change the speed because that messes with my head, right? To me, keys on a keyboard means frequency, frequency not speed, not right? Speed. But but you hear those, hear the transients, the T's in her voice? The sustain sounds pretty good, but when you hit those transients, she disappears, where'd she go? Start up. Okay. Lovely. Okay. And then I also, the, the other thing I like about this patch, I have the power to grab this and scrub. Uh, and if I turn on dither, I can. Nice, yeah. <laughs> okay. So, again, under the hood, what's happening here? We're doing FFT analysis and we're windowing. We're taking little segments of information. If I could flip, uh, close my slides, darn. Yeah, little segments of information, and I, we're taking it as FFT data and we're moving back and forth between those segments that are being grabbed from the sound. Not unlike granular synthesis, except that in granular synthesis, we stay in the time domain. Okay, if you remember granular synthesis from last time. In FFT, we go into the frequency domain, do analysis, and then resynthesize it, okay? So um, all kinds of fun you can have here with other samples uh, inside of the phase vocoder sampler. My, the last demo I want to point out to you, I'm going to go ahead and close the phase vocoder. I'm going to bring up uh, convolution workshop, okay? So here is where we start to get into, uh, zoom out a little bit. Not just working with one sound, but working with multiple sounds, okay? What convolution does is it allows you to take aspects of one sound and graft those onto the other sound, okay? You're, it's almost like cross-breeding two sounds, if you would, okay? Um, and you can do that by grabbing the amplitude of one sound and, and grafting it onto the, sa the, 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 the frequency qualities of another sound. Okay, so in this case, 
They've got two sound files here. If I turn on the audio, I'm going to play just the, the first sample for you is a rain stick. Are you familiar with a rain stick, what a rain stick is? If not, you can Google it and see a picture of it. Okay. How would we describe that sound? It sounds like rain. Okay, but uh, it, let's step out of the cause of the sound and talk more about its its abstract qualities. We're going to go from causal listening to reduced listening, which is what I just was covering with my FSM students. You took my FSM, you remember, right? Yep. Listening modes. It's like a bunch of little hits. Little hits. And quick succession. Okay. The percussive. It actually sounded pretty harsh. Pretty harsh, right? It's got some high frequency, yeah. a lot of high frequency content, yes. Is it... Uh, short bursts like the, the the drum sample or is it more sustained because of the the number of hits yeah it's more sustained because we've got all these little hits happening inside the rain stick okay let's try uh, let's uh, compare that then with the drum loop okay so yes it's it's a drum but what how would you describe it differently in terms of what what sonic qualities does it have different that are different than the other one Rhythm, okay. Lower frequencies. Lower frequencies. It, um, well, not just lower, but a, a wider range of frequency because it has the high frequencies as well. I would say, yeah, it has high frequencies as well. But where does it? Where does it also have more uh, range? Not frequencies, but Duration. dynamic range. Dynamic range, yeah, that's what I was thinking of, right? Let's think about the dynamic range here. We're 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 moving a lot from softer to louder, softer to louder with the drum sample. Okay, versus the rain stick sample, which just kind of stays at this dynamic and then goes back down, okay, on the loop, okay? What we can do with convolution is actually crossbreed these two sounds and get something like this. What? Yeah. Oh yeah. It almost sounds like we're playing the rhythm of the drum loop on the rain stick, right? That's exactly what it sounds yeah. like. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't play the rhythm. I, I'm using the FFT data to crossbreed them, okay? What if you... Uh... But I, I, the, the note I want to say here is that it... Let's see. Convolution works best when you have these differences where one is sustained and has a kind of static quality to its dynamic range and the other one has a more uh, more more variation in the dynamic range okay it's this kind of crossbreeding of differences in terms of dynamic range or frequency or those types of things that actually makes convolution the, uh, really fruitful uh, I have no more demos I'm actually gonna just turn off